All right. So based on our discussion of nucleation and growth of crystals, this gets us into the next topic of how do we suppress that and what cooling rate is necessary to suppress uh, nucleation and growth. So that's what we're going to do in this module. All right. So to do that, we need to look not only at the nucleation uh, rate, but the overall transformation rate, and that encompasses both nucleation, which we term I here, and growth, which we determine U here. So the um, transformation rate, which is the volume transformed over the total volume, is going to be equal to 1 minus the exponential, and then it's got those two terms in it. Um, and so that's the overall transformation rate. And what we're going to see is that it's a strong function of temperature, as we would expect, right? And this gets to where we had the, um, the highest rates are at the intermediate temperatures. So up here at the top, right, this is going to be very close to melting. You can see that this is log time down here, and this is temperature. This is a transformation curve. And so the nucleation starts at the first line, and then it finishes at the second black line. So you can see up here at the highest temperatures, um, it doesn't nucleate until a very long time relative um, to other temperatures. Same thing if we go to a really low temperature, like 1,000, um, we can also see that the rate, or the time it takes to transform, starts off pretty slow and ends slow, not as bad as up here. Uh, but what we see is that the maximum, the fastest it occurs, is in the intermediate temperature, which is right here. So this is what we term the nose, and this is at an intermediate temperature, about you know 1175 or so, or close to 1200. And we see that there, that's the um, fastest that this transformation starts and finishes. And so that's what we get from this analysis of nucleation and growth. And we want to know that because we want to try to avoid the transformation of this material that starts out as a liquid and forms a crystalline solid. So we want to try to suppress that, uh, that transformation. And so one of these transformation diagrams, which we sometimes call TTT for time temperature transformation diagram, um, has a maximum rate at the intermediate temperature, which is what we saw in the previous module. And so what we want to do then is we want to be able to use this diagram to find the critical cooling rate, CCR, sometimes abbreviated, um, because this is the slowest rate at which the transformation can be suppressed, right? So basically, uh, we want to find the slowest rate from the temperature we start to the temperature we cool down to to avoid this transformation, right? So we've done all this study of nucleation and growth because we want to try to suppress it. And so we can determine this critical cooling rate by evaluating the uh, temperature of the melt, so the temperature that we start at, so here they call that TL, minus the temperature of N, which is the temperature of the nose, so basically where it transforms the fastest. And then we can divide that by the time at that node, at said nose, so basically the time here. And so again, this is in log time. Uh, so that time per unit, sorry, that temperature per unit time is our critical cooling rate. So we have to be able to um, cool that melt at least that fast or faster. Otherwise, we will um, kind of enter this transformation range and cause nucleation of a crystalline solid and therefore not this amorphous material that we're after. So the melt will not crystallize if it's at a rate um, or exceeds the CCR. All right, so this critical cooling rate can be altered, as you might expect, by the composition. And so these are um, kind of the log critical cooling rate uh, versus the amount of stuff that we're adding. So here we're adding lithium oxide, sodium oxide, 
potassium oxide, and then mixtures of potassium and sodium. And what we see, because again, this is a log scale, is that the critical cooling rate is a heavy or strong function of composition. Again, note the, the, um, the log scale. So we can really adjust this uh, cooling rate uh, by adjusting the composition of a glass. And so that's one of the tools that we can use to get around uh, maybe a critical cooling rate that's too fast for our operation. All right, so to get a sense of these critical cooling rates, uh, I want you to go ahead and calculate the critical cooling rate um, for the material shown in this diagram that we've been looking at for the last couple of slides. So see if you can determine that cooling rate based on the equation that was provided and uh, approximate what that CCR is. And so do that in the quiz and then come back and we'll go over the results. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. And so before I flip over to the piece of paper to, to work this out, we need to record a couple of values. So we saw from the previous slides that we need to know the melt temperature, the nose temperature, and then the nose time. So let's take a look at those quantities. So the melt temperature is described up here. So it's uh, past 1500K. So uh, I'm gonna call that around 1525. Um, if it's, it might be slightly different, but I'll call it 1525. The temperature here at the nose is, um, like I mentioned in the previous module, about 1175, also K. Uh, so those are the two temperatures. And then for the time, the time is right here, the time of the nose. And so I put that at about 1.5, but keep in mind that's 1.5 and then that that's log t. So uh, those are our three values. Now I'm going to switch over the piece of paper and we'll work out the calculation. All right, so let's go ahead and work out this calculation. So I've re reproduced the equation for a critical cooling rate, CCR, and you see that these are the values that we had from the slides. So the melt temperature was about 1525. The nose temperature was about 1175. So I'm approximating here. And then same thing with the uh, log of the time was 1.5. So the first thing I need to do is obviously get this instead of log time to get this time. So we can uh, multiply both sides or take the exponent of both sides of 10. So this is log 10, right? So 10 to the log uh, Tn uh, equals 10 to the 1.5. This will cancel out the log and the log base 10, and this will give us the nose time is equal to 10 to the power 1.5, um, and that is about 31.6 seconds, since the units here were seconds described to us. And um, so this was in seconds, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn this into minutes. So that's about uh, 0.53 minutes, and you'll see why I'm gonna do that in a second. So I've got all my values here, here, and here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and plug that in. So 1525 minus 1175, both of those were in Kelvin, and then divided by 0.53 minutes. So my cooling rate's gonna be in Kelvin per minute. Uh, and so when I do that, that gives me a value of approximately 664 K per minute. And I'll go ahead. And so this was an approximate from uh, the textbook. So uh, I'll stick with the approximate. And so we're going to, this is the critical cooling rate we get. But let's go back to the slides for a second and get some perspective for this 664 number. All right. So we calculated a value for the critical cool rate, cooling rate at 664 K per minute. And the reason I had it do it in those units is because if you look closely down here, you'll see 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 1, so forth, and it's K per minute. So these lines that they're indicating on these curves, these very uh, um, light lines, these are cooling rates. 
and they're the cooling rates corresponding to what we see here. So this line here is 10 to the minus 4 K per minute. This one over here is 10 to the 3. And so you see the 10 to the 3, which is 1,000 K per minute, is roughly the same as our um, rate that we had for going right to the nose, right? So we got a value of 664, which is pretty close to 1,000, right? It's a little bit less, which is what we see here. And so what this tells us is that this is the slowest rate. 664 is the slowest rate at which we can cool to avoid nucleation. So we need to go faster. So we need to go 1,000 K or 2,000 K per minute to be able to suppress any transformation that happens here at the nose. So that's what those rates are giving us is how fast we need to cool to in order glass formation.